Welcome to Gulfstream today, and welcome to beautiful Gulfstream Park. It is Preakness Week, just a few days uh, up there at Pimlico at our sister racetrack. They'll be running the Preakness Stakes, and we can see if Nyquist can uh, win the second jewel of the Triple Crown. And uh, we have a fast main track, a firm turf course. We had rains throughout the area the last couple of days, but uh, everything is dried out. The turf course needed some uh, rain. So uh, beautiful conditions today, and uh, we'll see how things play out. You know what? We got a really far out. Far out? <laughs> far out. I got, I, it's far I, out. I went back to the 60s there for a minute. We got a really nice carryover <laughs> in the super high five to the rolling super, rolling super high five. $32,000 plus. They are going to bet this thing. We got eight runners in the opening race, and that is a really nice carryover. Of course, along with the early pick five this afternoon. And uh, in case you will have a ticket, she's going to show you in just a couple of moments. And the Rainbow Six is starting to build once again. And with an eight race card like we have today, it will start in race number three and is approaching $27,000. And I'll show you my Rainbow Six ticket uh, a little later on. And then we end the day, of course, with our final pick five of the afternoon and uh, that uh, another uh, ticket from acacia so uh i don't know where far out came from <laughs> but uh, it's going to be a far out afternoon at least as far as i'm concerned <laughs> I think yeah. so. how are I you think today so. by the way i am I, got, I, I don't know when it came from it just came out you know i kind of like it i think i'm going to start saying that i'm going to make it into trend. <laughs> it should be good yeah well i'm really excited it's preakness week uh, do, you, do you have a favorite preakness by the way i never asked you that a favorite preakness win no uh, I, I guess last year's have to remember yeah. being there and watching you know american pharaoh splash through the rain and everything like that That's and fun. being down on the rail I was actually I had the pleasure of working there I just thought it was an amazing to be part of that so yeah. uh, uh, the ones over the years you know I, I wasn't that close up so of course it's got a special spot in my okay. heart boy but was it wet yes. and uh, uh, that horse uh, went out there got the lead and never looked back so it's still etched in my mind and oh, uh, yeah. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. What a great yes. weekend it is up there. If you can get a chance to go up to Pimlico, so uh, it's a great fun. weekend. If not, you come right here to the Gulfstream Park. We have a Preakness watch party here like no other. I oh, think it, yes. I think you get a free Preakness hat if you're here early enough yes. and buy a program or a daily race form. We'll be telling you more about that in just a couple of moments. So we've taken care of all of our little earlier business now. We're going to start the day, as I mentioned, fast main track, firm turf course this afternoon. And I better get to the first race because that's where we're going to start. And you want to show your <laughs> early pick five ticket. Yes, early pick five ticket, a nice $36 ticket there. I went three deep in the first leg, then four deep. That I thought that was a very wide open race and I could totally foresee pressing the all button right. in race number two. I decided to go four deep to keep it inexpensive, and then I found my single in the third race. That's with pure talent, but we'll get to that later. And then two deep and three deep after that. $36, and you can also uh, factor those tickets in, as we mentioned, in that super high five, uh, which starts in race number two with over $32,000 in the pool. And you guarantee they're going to be sending it in on that bet. Yeah. It's a good bet, along with, the, uh, of course, the very popular early pick five. With that said, let's look at who we picked in this first race. I started off in with the number five, Sun and Air. This one is uh, dropping to the $10,000 level, turning back today to five and a half furlongs, uh, getting parked wide, five wide last, showing some late interest. Uh, that was a $25,000 career debut. Taking that immediate drop, Ralph Nix, he's pretty good with Maidens making their second start, and I see that's well we're in exact agreement look at that what a <laughs> way to start up our preakness week with uh, this morning here at Gulfstream. and i totally agree for all the reasons that you mentioned the five son and air which looks like uh, he's the favorite right now two to one on the boards we see had some really nice works before his debut and then had a, a little bit of a uh, tough going wide in that no. debut but i think coming off that effort now had the race under his belt tyler gaffleone is going to stay aboard who wrote him in his first start too yeah number four key the storm is cutting back to this distance this afternoon after setting the pace got beat only your nose guess what it was 50 to 1 last time out facing similar quality going three quarters of a mile uh you know i noticed this gelding has been improving since they took the blinkers off and uh you're not certainly not going to get 51 this afternoon 50 to 1 this afternoon absolutely in fact he's on the board right now at a very square nine to one but mm -hmm. still taking much more money and attention than he was in that most recent start and showed a lot of early speed which i liked last time out and as you said got beaten by just a nose and a really good effort there yeah and we both used the number eight morenzazo Moren, Moren 
Morinazzo. Morinazzo, yes. Morinazzo. One of two starting for Antonio Sano in here. He also has the two who's a first-time starter, Templar Glory. But the eight Morinazzo has seven races under his belt so far and does seem to be kind of steadily improving at the sprints there and looks like might be able to run in the action today. Yeah, I know. A good point to always look to see and, uh, when the trainer has, uh, you know, get a first-time starter in there along with a horse with uh, some uh, uh, previous experience. So uh, you got to watch the board. Very important here, and you get a chance to do that. The eight horse currently up there at four to one and Templar glory up there right now at three to one so it looks like they're leaning very very early in the yes. wagering towards the three but they really can't go by that not a lot of money in the pools right yet we still have more than 55 minutes to post we're going to go the race number two and it's always a favorite part of the day when we got two-year-olds this one four and a half furlongs maiden claiming two-year-olds they're fillies they're going to run for a twenty-five thousand dollar tag we got six runners in here and once again almost exactly <laughs> the same our second and third picks are a, a flip-flop but we both use the number two and that is israel's dream yes israel's dream trained by george weaver and a quick stat for you in the past five years george weaver with two-year-olds uh, first time starter in the maiden claiming ranks, which is what this race is, maiden claiming. He's four for 22, so a kind of small sample, but 18% win, 50% of the time in the money. That was really big, and $1.93 ROI, so pretty solid there. But very, very often, 18% winning is still very solid, and that 50% in the money was big. Yeah, and this is uh, by Asire, um, Isra Israel's dream it is by Asire Cantharo, so it produces two year old first time winners at a strong 28% rate. This horse burst on the scene last year. Count throwers, I'm talking as a circle mm -hmm. years ago, and a lot of his horses were winning early. So uh, another thing to like about the George Weaver, got those six solid Palm Beach down workouts, and Tyler Gaffleon will be in the saddle this afternoon. Yes, and then I went with the number one, my third eye in third. You used that horse in second, but the horse that I used in second, uh, you used in third. So again, flip-flop <laughs> there was the four, Rochette. Kathleen O'Connell, the trainer. Eduardo Nunez is going to be in the saddle. Uh, this one had some really consistent works on the tab as well, working over at Gulfstream Park West. Uh, last one was four furlongs in on a fast track, went 49 and four, so pretty solid coming into this race. Yeah, and Kathleen does a good job with her two year olds. And then the one horse, My Third Eye, is the daughter of Hattrick, debuting for trainer Wesley Ward, actually the morning line favorite. Couple of uh, Palm Meadows turf workout showing. I found that very interesting. Uh, the freshman gets Lasix, has apprentice John Cruz handling the always uh, adventurous inside yeah. post. The reason I didn't put this one on top was because of that inside post, a first time starter. So uh, we'll see how that works out. But leaving Wesley Ward off your ticket can prove to be very, very costly. Yes, we learned that the hard <laughs> way last time, right? <laughs> well, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we'll show you the Rainbow Six or my Rainbow Six ticket. Welcome back. Race number three this afternoon is a seven furlong claimer, three year olds and up, non winners of three races in life, or three year olds, $6,250, seven runners in the field. And as I mentioned, this is where the Rainbow Six will start this afternoon, over $26,000 in that pool. Quickly, we'll show you my Rainbow Six ticket this afternoon. It's $43.20. We're going to go three deep three deep then you see two 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 and three could not find a single this afternoon uh but uh, was tempted to single a horse in race number five and that is storm and inti uh, the six horse but i did not do it because i just like the uh seven coming out of a key race but we'll talk about that more in a little while but right now we're going to take a look and see how we both handicapped the third race i started with the one in here changing direction how'd you go i liked the two pure talent and this was actually the single that i used in my early pick five uh, 
and this was in race three, so it doesn't overlap with the late pick five when you have eight races. So I'm trying to keep my ticket affordable and looking for a horse that I wanted to single. I decided on the two pure talent in top, which I see that you used in second. But this horse has the speed and it was beat by a 15 to one shot last time out as the beaten favorite. But if you look two back, had a really big effort to win by three and three quarter lengths at seven furlongs. I think cutting back to the sprinting last time out, showing some speed, might have bounced a little bit off that big effort two back. Yeah, it looks like he's the main part of the pace scenario this afternoon. He's going to be tough if he's left alone on the front end. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're thinking with the uh, single in there. And I can understand that. I did go with the number one changing direct and making his first start since recovering. Had a little bit of a slow start in a race. He defeated a pair of next out winners. So it was a key race. It was a 12-5 condition claimer going seven furlongs. It was on a sealed sloppy track. The trainer is Gustavo Delgado. Edgar Zayas handling the son of ours. Pure talent in second. I see you use the one on your ticket, and but you have the number five, Jaden's best in second. I do. So we're in agreement with the top three horses, just in different <laughs> positions, I guess. I liked the five, Jaden's best, coming out of that last race. Actually finished second ahead of Pure Talent. Again, I just think Pure Talent off coming after such a big effort to back and does have the speed. Jaden's best is one that can sit just a little bit behind the pace and be able to rally. Finished a very solid second last time out. Also now first off the claim and moving over into the barn of Marcial Navarro. Today. Yeah, what I like, I, I, you know, horses, some horses like seven furlongs, some uh, it, it's an in-between distance. And this horse we're talking about, Jaden's best, two for four in the money at seven eighths of a mile. You mentioned the barn change this afternoon via the claiming route that certainly looks like a logical contender. We got him boxed up and there, but Acacia's taking a stand and singling number two, pure talent in her early pick five ticket. We're going to go to race number four this afternoon, and this one is one mile and one sixteenth on the turf. Claim is three and up, twelve thousand five hundred dollars. Scratch the eight in here, and then a stack cruise, which leaves us with a seven horse field. And uh, I'm going to start it off in here uh, with the one hat attack. And I know you like to go back and show your performance, but this one dropped to this twelve five level, stretching out to a mile in the sixteenth uh, after breaking slowly and failing to get on track. I know you had a, 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 re a replay you wanted to show on this horse. Yes, the last start, this horse didn't do too much running, so I actually want to show a video of the start two back right. on uh, on March 27th. Right. To see, he's the number four here coming into uh, the stretch. Had to go really, really wide. Was bumped at the start, not too major, but was right. shuffled back. And this is a horse that doesn't really need to be in the front anyway. You see, it's just wide the entire turn for home. At one point, he's actually six wide. They're strung across his track. He's basically in uh, the middle of the track here in this race and it seemed like this was a big effort again might have bounced and didn't really come back too strong in the next race because it was such a big effort just the entire trip this horse had a tough time and it seemed like every time he got checked had to go wide and managed to rally and finish third which I thought was big considering all the things he had to deal well, with. Well is it one of the horses that you used on your late pick five ticket? It is indeed yes <laughs> I, <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> well let's show that ticket there. Yes late pick five ticket I went three deep then three deep and found my single in race number six that silver magic so, so I was able to find a single <laughs> in both of my tickets today to keep it affordable then two deep and hopefully make it to the last leg and got four deep there. Well, I have Hat Attack on top of my ticket. You did not use Hat Attack on top of your ticket. Who did you use on top? I used Hat Attack in second. Uh, I still think he might run well. I wouldn't be surprised to see him win, but I used the number four, Traffic Express, this time. And um, this was taking a little bit of a gamble. This horse is six to one in the morning line, but Emi Sal Jaramillo is going to climb aboard, and it looks like this horse has just been steadily improving. I think that the mile and 16th distance should suit him well. And looking at his past couple of races, um, it just seems like he's bumped or he's had some traffic troubles again and might be able hopefully to get a clear trip today. Well, we're going to show you the horse I used in second. That's babe, uh, number two, Baby Drama. A uh, second at this level on April 13 is dropping back, but you're going to see the trouble this horse had at the start. I don't know if this horse caused its own trouble, but a pretty wild beginning here for the number nine, Baby Drama, in its last race. Uh, you can see right there, just not, it just goes out, goes in, goes, you know, just really unruly start there for the number nine. It didn't run that badly after that. 
finished fifth. That was about, again, $16,000 maidens going a mile. So I just thought of that. I like the fact that this horse closed and, you know, didn't get a part of, you know, wasn't first, second, or third, but finished fifth. It was at the 16 level. Dropping down today just needs to get out of the gate in a timely fashion. I think this horse could be somewhere on the ticket. We both mentioned the, the one head attack that we used. And who else did you use on your ticket? I landed on the number six, Judith's Novel, who is stretching out in distance and also moving over to the turf. So a lot of things going on there, a couple of different changes, but might be able to be the perfect storm and help this horse run in the money. Improved hugely off of the first effort to start so far and does have some turf pedigree there as well as a half to a stakes winning mare impossible time. So some good pedigree who earned uh, more than $500,000. So I thought this one might be able to run in the money. Well, I got a 10 to one and third and, and I want to ask you this question about this race. I couldn't find any speed. Yeah. I kept looking for who's going to be on the fence. <laughs> Not much early speed. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. So I, I thought, and this is sort of a guess on my part, and this is the five-year-old who's stretching out an additional 16th of a mile today and adding blinkers after rallying along the rail. He finished fourth. It was against 16 maidens going a mile. It was up at Tampa Bay on their turf course. I think the addition of Blinkers should help him show more speed in a race that I see devoid of any early pace yeah. scenario in here. So I'm looking at a horse maybe wearing Blinkers and, you know, they're, they're trying to put some speed into him. And maybe he's the one that jumps up, goes outside, and, and goes to the lead and, and maybe can steal this one on the front end. So uh, certainly is shaping up to be a, a jockey's race here. Absolutely. It's it's all about looking to see where the horses might line up. And <laughs> uh, some horses that you may not expect to go out to the front might take advantage no, of that. No, that is exactly what's going to happen yeah. in there because uh, you know that i mean uh, everybody knows how to read the race form well you <laughs> hope so and they're going to say wait a minute let's go to the lead there's no yeah. one else going to the lead here <laughs> well with that said let's go to race five seven and a half furlongs on the turf claim is three and up non winners of uh, three in life or a turf race in six months, 30000 down to $25,000. And we do have a scratch of the main track only, number 10, and that is Master Blender. And we both start our analysis with the number six, and that is Stormin' Inti. And I know you had a spotlight on Stormin' Inti. Yes, I want to go back and show the last race for this five-year-old horse. That was on April 22nd. You'll see he's the number three here. It looked like he was done running as they are rounding the turn it looked like there wasn't really too much left and then as they start to come he starts to move on the outside re-rallied uh, it looked like there was a three-way photo and just missed on the outside was beaten only by a neck to finish third these three horses came just pounding down the stretch all three of them very game and it looked like storming into on the outside might even be able to make it and again just missed to finish third by a neck of the three horses there. So a very impressive run from him. And you know, when when I started the, the analysis of this particular race, I read you the conditions in there. Uh, you know, th non-winners of three races in life or a turf race in six months, and that is um, uh, November 18th, and Storming Inti fits that condition yeah. perfectly. This horse has a little bit more experience than some of the horses going to face in there today, so I thought the, the conditions of the race were set up perfectly for Storming Inti. And this is the one I mentioned. I was almost going to single on my ticket, but uh, I like the seven a little bit in there, so I went too deep in here, and I'm talking about my Rainbow Six ticket. So before we get to your two, I will tell you about the seven. I'll tell you why I like this one. This one's going to face 30000 $1,000 condition claim is on the turf after stalking the pace, failing to connect on the main track, but it was a monster key race. $35,000 optional claim that has produced four next out winners from seven yeah. starters. I am a sucker for a key race. <laughs> I'll be at this one on the main track. I'm trying to do a little bit of guesswork in here. I don't know what this horse is on the morning line. He's a uh, fourth choice in the morning yeah. line. A and because of that key race, the reason I added him on my ticket, I'm talking about my Rainbow Six ticket, of course, here on my exact ticket. But you did go with the number two here, and that's with the Friends with K. Mill. Yes, I liked Friends with K. Mill, who does have a win at this distance, which only a couple of horses in this race actually do the seven and a half furlongs a little bit of a quirky distance there the two turns here at Gulfstream Park uh, this one coming off a couple of a mile and then a mile in a 16th race last time out but has never really been too far out of the action number four Blue Harbor both used this one and yes. this one is turning back to seven and a half furlongs you mentioned that distance after rallying to notches uh, non winners of two lifetime condition that was going one mile and one sixteenth he's really a consistent son of Rockport Harbor and hasn't run a bad race locally since
since returning from the layoff in March. He's always right there. Yeah, he is. And, and that victory that you mentioned last time out was first off the claim, moving over into the barn of David Fox. So now second race from there. That last race was on April 20th. Had a little bit of a freshening coming into this next race, looking in pretty good form. And um, this one looks like it's pretty versatile as well. He may be able to go more towards the front. And there should be a lot of speed in this race. Right. So I liked this horse because he can sit a little bit further back. Yeah, and I always like to see a horse that's consistent against this level, yeah. you know, at this level. So a horse that, uh, uh, you know, you might want to, you know, we both didn't use that horse. I don't know. Did you use that horse on your rainbow, uh, on your late pick five ticket? I did. You did. Yes. See, I, was, I, I only went too deep in there. See if it's going to cost me. Of course, <laughs> the beauty of this is you have your <laughs> ability to make up your own ticket. We're just sort of pointing you in the right direction. Uh, oh, we hope we point you in the right direction. Hopefully. <laughs> Six furlongs, claim as fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, non-winners of two, $12,500. Scratch number eight in here, Rosa Mystica. And uh, this was your single on uh, your late pick five ticket, yes. and that is the number five. Silver Magic. Yes, Silver Magic, who is moving back over from the turf back to the dirt, which really looks to be her preferred surface. She's also cutting back in distance a bit, ran a mile on the turf, and we'll go back to the six furlongs. Two starts back, ran six and a half furlongs on the dirt, and that was an impressive victory there. And uh, trained by Gary Jackson, and a quick stat for you there, Gary Jackson in the past five years, turf to dirt in the sprints. Again, this is a six furlong race. Three for 23, 13% win, but 57% in the money with a dollar oh eight roi but uh, very strong numbers there especially that 57 percent in the money well if you look at this horse's past performance this daughter of elusive quality made a similar surface switch and distance switch mm -hmm. and it produced a victory back on uh, april fool's day so uh <laughs> no fooling this horse has run well in the past when making a uh, distance and surface switch i used the one in second you used it in third and that's player zaragoza this one moved to the victor barboza junior bond vita claim uh gonna go back to the main track today. Gained late last time out. He finished third against Simla going five furlongs on the turf. Uh, if you look at the bottom of his past performance, the barn currently has a $6.49 ROI recently with new claims. So they've gotten a claim and come back and won a big bunch of money with yeah. it. So uh, just thought I'd throw that out there. But you did use the number four in second, and that is Chichi Girl. I did. I used Chichi Girl uh, second in the barn of Barry Croft. This one has a couple of sharp works on the tab as well, working over at Gulfstream Park West. Last time out running the six and a half furlongs at the at this level, the 12-5 the non-winners of two, finished a solid third, beaten only by three and a half lengths, and had a very nice maiden victory at Gulfstream back at the beginning of April. Two starts back, one by two lengths over there. Well, number two, Dancing Cool, is cutting back to three quarters of a mile after moving to the Aubrey Mirage Barn and taking the Overland route. If you go back and look at this horse's last race, he was five and six wide. He finished six against similar going six and a half furlongs uh, and I think you, you know you can expect some improvement a uh, second start under uh, this uh, uh, uh under trainer Aubrey Mirage, a uh, care. Uh, this horse uh, moving barns, not by the claim, just changed barns last time out. And I just thought that this horse could be more in contact with the field, maybe can grab a share at a price. I think it's eight to one or something yeah. like that on the morning line. Yes, eight to one on the morning line. Pretty square price there. And Playa Zaragoza is eight to one as well. So no. if, if that trifecta hits for you, it'd be a very nice payoff. A nice payoff, <laughs> but, uh, you know, Silver Magic, you're single. So yes. uh, we sort of were thinking alike, <laughs> at least in the top part of that. Yes. Thank well, that's you. always good when you have a single and then we both pick the same one on top. Yeah. I don't know how good that is for you <laughs> because uh, <laughs> uh, the way I've been going with my singles, now my singles have been doing good. I just can't get the rest of the ticket in. <laughs> Let's go to race number seven, one mile allowance optional claim at three and up. $16,000, that claiming level. A couple of scratches in here. The number two, High Kodiak Warrior. And number five, an old campaigner called Concert Stage. Uh, looks like a nice spot for a number seven, Piloting. Yes, Piloting, as you said, looks like a nice spot. And I just think... Uh, that's really the key there. It looks like the, this horse will fit in perfectly with this race. Uh, first start in the barn of Mark Cassie. This one broke broke his maiden at Gulfstream Park uh, back in uh, earlier in his career, two for 18 so far, and, and actually did have a win at Aqueduct. Has been running on the inner track through the winter, coming back over to South Florida. Now was disqualified and placed third at that last victory, so trying to get back to the winner's circle. The last time he was 
honestly in the winner circle was in August of 2015. So it's been a while between drinks, but again, first time uh, with the trainer by Tappet and has that made and win it. Yeah, he's a gilded son of Tappet, nice to like. And I think he's got that tactical speed needed to really succeed going to one turn mile here at Gulfstream Park. So a logical contender on these, a big uh, low price, I think two to one on the morning line. I did go with the number six, a titanium heart in second, turn it back to a mile after defeating, I thought, a solid group of three-year-olds and up. Uh, made in special weight test, going a mile in the 16. Here's the problem. A lot of people do not like this this time of year. Uh, titanium heart is the only three-year-old in the field. Uh, he's got to face these older horses for the first time. Lionel Reyes at the control. Not the first time. Yeah. Proved it could beat him last time, but the only three-year-old in this field. Right. Well, that, that's actually one of the reasons that I didn't put this horse on my top three. Not that I didn't like his effort last time out. I thought it was a really solid effort, as you mentioned. Uh, one by a length and three quarters that day. I ended up using the three uh, Chris the Great in second, who you used in third. But uh, it seems like this one, since moving Barnes and coming over to Kathleen O'Connell, has been showing a lot more speed in that most recent race, especially. Broke his maiden last time out and won by three and a half lengths and now stretching out to the mile. I think all of those things together. This is also the second race off of a big 13-month layoff. Yeah, big 13 13-month layoff uh, stepping up, as you mentioned, stretching out. He shipped there. He was in California yeah. before that came here. Kathleen got him ready to break his uh, break its maiden at the six furlongs. It's a light, lightly raced five-year-old. And this one, I've got a feeling this could be a pretty nice horse in here after that performance last yeah, time out. So. You know, lightly raced five-year-old, really nicely bred. So uh, a horse to keep an eye on. You closed it out with the number one in here, and that is Ender's Cat. I do. This one has showed some speed in the past as well. Also finished really nicely in in the grade three skip away when trained by Mikhail Yanukov, uh, finished a solid third there behind the ever hard knocking <laughs> Valid who won that race. So kept some really good company and also finished ahead of a horse named Savoy Stomp, a very highly touted Todd Fletcher horse as well. So again, kept some good company. This one's a, a $155,000 four year old son of Giants Causeway. Um, changed barns and finished a solid fourth last time out and could improve off of that effort. Yeah, and a lot of back, uh, you know, a lot of back interest on that horse the horses he's been placed uh, running against so uh that is the number one horse as we mentioned at the top of the show it's an eight race card today so our final race of the afternoon full field of nine runners five furlongs on the turf these are claimants three and up non-winners of three in life or three-year-olds ten thousand dollars and nine runners in the field as i mentioned uh, we have our exact the flip flop so mm -hmm. i'll defer to you and find out why pay any price on top of your ticket. Yes, well, I really thought uh, there's a lot of early speed in this race here. So pay any price if he can avoid getting stuck in a, in a pace duel and getting tired at the end there. He actually seemed like the, the fastest horse in here to me. Ran last time over at Tampa and won by six lengths. Very impressive victory there. That was the first race off of about a two-year, nearly two-year layoff as well. So I think coming off of that, if he can avoid getting stuck in that pace duel, like I mentioned, also moving from the dirt to the turf. But if you look at his last turf race, that was at Gulfstream Park in July of 2014. I know it was a long time ago, but finished a very se uh, solid second there. And if he's able to retain that kind of speed, I think he could work out well. Yeah, you know, he's running over ten over at Tampa, and after that, now he crushed that field of $8,000, two lifetime claimants. It looks like the barn of uh, the owner, Frank Calabrese, uh, reached in and grabbed this guy, bought him, and brought him all, uh, over to the uh, down south here. So we'll see how he runs. He looks like he's got to be playing catch me if you can. But like you said, if there's a lot of speed and he gets done early, maybe it sets up for a horse like Danny's Turbo, who moved to the Efren Lozer Jr. Bon Vita claim. Now, uh, going to debut today, uh, you know, at, at, at the $10,000 duel for lead. He was second against 16 claimers on the main track. So uh, Danny's turbo on your ticket, too, and maybe he sits the trip behind the speed, or does he have to go up and fight with the lead? Yeah, well, he is moving over to the turf as well. There's right. some sneaky turf pedigree. He's out of an elusive quality mare, and uh, if you look at his last couple races, I think it's pretty clear that something needed to change, and they're very solid at the start of his career. He's burned a lot of money. He's been four out of five of his starts. He's gone off as the favorite. Two of those, of course, have been wins, but those were his first two starts. So kind of a couple of questions there remaining, and that's why I put him in second. And you went to the outside with the number nine, and that is Atheon. I did. I liked this horse. This one is one that doesn't need the lead, so might be able to come from off the pace. Uh, Ten out of 14 lifetime starts have been in the money. Eight out of 14 of those have been second or third, so some really gaudy numbers there of how well this horse finishes up. Finished third last time out off about 
before month layoff. Well, number two, Greg Rules Da is stepping up to the next level after coming from off the pace, and that was the key to me to defeat 10,000 two lifetime claimers at the distance. And he should see almost the same pace scenario that afforded him the victory last time out. And uh, uh, just one of those horses, I thought if uh, things really do get uh, rough and dicey on the front end, maybe it sets up for a horse like number two, Greg Rules Da, coming back or after a couple of weeks uh, after that nice performance. A uh, week and a half ago or so. So uh, that is how we see the eight race card this afternoon. We mentioned race number one. Today starts that huge, nice carryover of $32,000 plus in the Super High Five. Exciting. Good luck today. Yeah. We'll turn it over to Pete, and we'll be back in just a little while. What do I love about